can say that in our group, uh, we have two centers. One is the brain, it is, it is our R&D in Athens, and the other one is the heart, pumping all the blood, and this is the factory here in Romania. All the technology that we're shipping to our clients across the world, it comes from our factory here in Romania. Throughout all these years, our product lines uh, have changed, and uh, the changes came after serious consideration of what's going on in uh, regulation from our esteemed clients, what are their uh, needs, and of course, listening to what are the technology trends and the market needs. Maybe something that we are missing from this uh, auditorium is what are the uh, real clients are looking for, maybe commercial uh, associations, for example, which are the real users of smart infrastructure, smart cities. So present day offering for from Intracom Telecom and Intrarom are in the uh, telecommunication sector starting from infrastructure, network intelligence, applications, and then monetization. If I wanted to put some buzzwords, we are active in uh, producing in our factory here uh, wireless access and transmission products, uh, developing telco software solutions, billing, uh, IN, uh, VAS uh, software, deploying ICT solutions, and also now going into the uh, energy sector and e-health services. Of course, we could have done even more, but uh, we have to focus. We have to focus. We have to uh, walk before we can run. Well, with the two centers, one in Athens and one in Bucharest, uh, our company managed in the past 20 years to expand uh, in the uh, four corners of the world. Right now we are present in almost 16 countries and we are exporting technology produced here in Romania in all the places of uh, the world. Uh, besides having uh, subsidiaries and uh, sales uh, channels in the countries that you can see on the uh, screen, we have a vast network of partners. So. Rest assured that the technology which is produced here covers mo much more ground on the uh, global map. It's more or less 70 countries uh, on a global scale receiving the technology that we are producing uh, in Romania. We do invest a lot in research and development. And uh, this is uh, realized, materialized, in the uh, all fine products which are produced uh, over here. Uh, we spend almost 7% every year from our uh, revenue into R&D, and we have one of the finest R&D facilities uh, in the uh, Southeast uh, Europe. We do receive a lot of uh, European uh, funding, and I, I was really interested in listening to uh, the uh, Mr. Secretary about it. And this is a good initiative, uh, tunneling money, funneling money into very directed, very focused uh, activities. Nowadays, the uh, big theme is uh, smart cities. Back in 1997, when I joined the company, that was the big dream was fixed mobile convergence FMC, which is now a reality. Maybe it took us a little bit longer to achieve that, but now we have it. So smart cities now, I hope it will be materialized much sooner. It's all about focusing and putting down the uh, uh, correct infrastructures and listening to the demand of what the people out in the streets uh, are looking for. So in Barcelona this year, uh, our main theme was uh, smarter connected societies. Uh, it was the first time that we used uh, the theme and uh, we tried to focus on the four things that our company is uh, trying to develop uh, with own uh, resources. The primary one is infrastructure. Uh, this is what we do best for the past 30 plus years, 20 of those producing here in Romania, infrastructure uh, products. Then adding intelligence, the usual way to do that is building a lot of software, then applications, and then finding ways to monetize all that. So the final outcome is to get to the objective which is to allow our clients Telecom, Vodafone, Orange, whoever in the world, 
to reach out to their clients, to their subscribers, to give them facilities, to give them the tools to live an easier life, but also to do easier their business. I will give you some examples for it, uh, for instance. Uh, unfortunately, a few days back we had uh, this incident in uh, Brussels, and before that in Paris, and before that. Unfortunately, this is a vicious cycle. It will keep going on. I regret to say that, but unfortunately, this is the situation. So one of the things that cities has to be has to have to become smarter is in terms of surveillance. At the same time, residential. Well. I was reading a very nice, interesting graph uh, last week on uh, LinkedIn. And unfortunately, even for my country, in Greece, uh, we are lacking behind by a big gap uh, compared to other uh, European Union countries in terms of e-commerce. Actually, Greece is maybe the uh, last, the second before last. Uh, I will not talk about the other countries which are left or right of, of uh, Greece, but unfortunately we are second before last. Well, there is a big problem there, and it's not because we don't like uh, doing commerce, but we don't have the facilities. So first of all, we have to connect to, the, uh, uh, to a server to make uh, an electronic order, then to make an electronic payment. And unfortunately, last year, even in my country, with some capital controls applied by the government, people started figuring out what are the alternative ways to do uh, commerce, e-commerce. How you do that? First, you have to get access from your home, residential access. So this is something that makes our societies smarter. And Intercom is active in this field. Into another business sector, for example, hospitality. I guess Romania has a very nice landscape, trying to attract uh, more <coughs> tourism in the sea or in the mountain regions. What is the easiest way to do that? First of all, advertising. You have to let people know about you. But when they come here, you have to make them feel like they're at home. And most of these people, they're coming from places like UK, where the initiative of high-speed broadband makes them believe that everywhere else in the world they will find something similar. Well, they come to a hotel and they don't have Wi-Fi. Big disappointment, next year they don't come. So. What we have to do is to make uh, these facilities, hospitality facilities, hotels, resorts, convention centers, smarter. And this is part of making the society smarter. Again, coming back to public safety. Well, fortunately, in your country, you don't have the same situation we have in Greece, but we have a lot of earthquakes. So from time to time, we have the requirement to have emergency facilities. How you do that? Well, you have to have an emergency network connecting the fire brigade, the police uh, departments, the uh, hospitals, the clinics, everyone. So you have to deploy either permanent or temporary facilities, infrastructures, in order to be able to respond quickly in the case of emergency. Again, public safety is one of the sectors that we are active. And having such facilities, it helps uh, the society uh, feel secure and prosper. Another situation, and uh, we came across this uh, example very recently in our commercial uh, approach to clients, is um, asset and uh, infrastructure monitoring. I put the example here of road safety and traffic uh, monitoring. Last but not least, for our uh, telco customers, and it's not because it is a nice buzzword to use, small cells, but it is because it helps people out in the street communicate easier. For example, again, coming back to the UK, very nice, very, very, I can say, uh, very good example. In UK, a couple of years ago, the uh, municipalities, they realized that they have a power. And the power is that they have street furniture, as they, as they call them. They have lampposts, they have walls, they have bus stops. And people tend to live a lot out there. On the pavement, always in very near to a wall or a lamppost, they are waiting at the bus stop for the bus or for at the taxi uh, rank for a taxi to come. So what are they going to do there? 
waste their time probably. No. The alternative that these people in the UK thought is, why don't we deploy some infrastructure, maybe some Wi-Fi infrastructure? So the UK became the first country where operators could go and obtain access to these uh, facilities, concessions as they call them, and with the prospect, with the uh, expectation that they can deploy communication infrastructure, and over this infrastructure, people driving, walking, standing, just drinking coffee at the uh, cafeteria next to it, they can stay connected, connected with business, connected with people, connected with partners, connected with everyone. Not only that, but also some devices. We're talking about M2M as well, not only for uh, human uh, interaction, but also M2M. So this is how the small cell backhaul and small cell in general concept was developed. Again, Intracom has developed the technology in Athens and we're producing the technology here in Romania. And talking about what are we producing here in Romania and what we have announced this year uh, in uh, Barcelona. It will help, the graph will help you because I put also the uh, relevant uh, icon next to it. We have announced uh, one, two, three, for five different uh, products in uh, Romania. Uh, the most important those of those are our new residential uh, access terminal. We believe that residential access uh, is part of uh, a smarter society. There are uh, European Union initiatives. This uh, Horizon 2020 is uh, a very good uh, initiative and it is actually uh, one which is fully aligned to uh, making internet a necessity, like every home has to have uh, water and electricity connection, now every home has to have internet connection. This is part of our life, we cannot uh, neglect it. In, in Barcelona, Telstra in Australia announced that they want to deploy the first gigabit mobile gigabit network. Depending on the needs of each society, you hear one gigabit there, in UK some other things. Maybe in Greece we want just to have some connectivity to have e-commerce, but definitely connectivity, regardless if it is one megabit or one gigabit. So this is where we want to uh, uh, invest, to put our money on, and we believe that uh, starting July a new product will start being produced here in Romania, the Ybus Connect. The uh, second product that we announced in uh, Barcelona it is uh, an, one of the five important ones, it is our uh, high bandwidth uh, E-band radio. For those not familiar entirely with the uh, terminology, and apologize for using this terminology, uh, it is uh, a high bandwidth transmission link uh, using uh, one of the new frequencies. When a vendor and an operator want to use a technology and the vendor wants to develop the technology, unfortunately there is always an obstacle. It's a regulator allowing or not the use of the technology. And everybody's hope is that countries like Romania or like Greece, they are fully aligning with what the European Union uh, is trying to do, to have harmonization of spectrum everywhere. This helps companies, international companies, to go out and do business without worrying for the local environment. The local environment can be, can have things, uh, like banking, for example, finding the uh, operation in the country. But when it comes to making a decision to deploy infrastructure and go out and offer services, well, at least in the European Union it has to be done uh, without any consideration if there are local obstacles. So this new product, Ultralink, we had our first pilot production run in December, January, and now going into full production here in Romania. Now this product is also going through homologation for use in the United States. So from the previous slide you saw our, we are active in the United States and technology produced here in Romania will be shipped to our clients in the United States. There are three more products, but basically these are versions of the uh, previous uh, ones that we announced in the Barcelona event in 2015. For example, the uh, small cell backhaul in the 60 gigahertz, again a high frequency uh, which is available worldwide, actually. And now we are producing here in Romania and shipping to clients in Africa and the United States already. 
uh, in Russia, in Middle East. Uh, so I will keep repeating that all the products that we are building here in uh, Romania, they are being shipped uh, everywhere. Uh, I don't know if it is the uh, proper auditorium to go into some details about what we are doing, uh, particularly in terms of technology. But what I have to emphasize is that this technology is standard-based. So this is one of the principles uh, that our company follows for the past 30, since 78, so it's probably 38 years old to build standardized solutions. Why? Because we have to sell those everywhere. That's why. That's the principal uh, objective. So, for example, our uh, mini OSDR, uh, Webus mini OSDR, the 42 gigs, that's another frequency as well. The Webus Connect, that's our new, uh, that's a jewel in our uh, portfolio right now. And uh, there are really uh, high hopes about this product. It's, a, it's leading in its uh, sector. And the purpose of developing this product is actually because that we have listened to the market needs, initiatives like the uh, Broadband 2020 in European Union, mandating not just connectivity, not just one megabit or two megabits connectivity, but actually full triple play. So again, technology developed according to standards, technology developed according to trends, and produced here in Romania. We're trying to make things simple in terms of R&D and in terms of deployment and in terms of production. So a lot of software being uh, used. And coming to, again, working on the requirements of local trends, for example, I didn't put the coloring on the uh, products just because for, for fun, but simply because there are clients wanting a, a red product because they are going to deploy it on a rooftop with tiles or they want to deploy it on a street lamp like in UK, in London. So that has to be uh, a gray color. So we are listening to what our clients have to do, and we are adapting our solutions. Our Ultralink E-Band product, Intracom is developing uh, high bandwidth uh, technology up to three gigabit, for example, compared to your ADSL service at home. Your ADSL service is probably 24 megabits at the best. This is 10 times, 15 times better than what you can get maximum at home. So this is what we call high capacity, high bandwidth, highway uh, transmission. Now, having spoken about infrastructure, products being built here in uh, Romania, the next thing that our company is active is adding intelligence to the network. Uh, the usual form of uh, infrastructure I guess everybody's familiar with is the Wi-Fi. So this is the virtualized Wi-Fi intelligence with our software that we can add uh, over infrastructure. That can be part of a Wi-Fi, that can be part of a 4G, that can be part also of the transmission network behind it. Who is intended for this virtualized Wi-Fi? Well, telco operators for sure. Uh, airport authority, that's an example I gave you. Uh, you can uh, put also the municipality uh, authorities. If municipalities have difficulty fund funding their operation from uh, government, from federal government, they can become a very nice businessman. They can sell services to their uh, citizens as well. They can sell location-based services. For example, somebody, a tourist, coming into the city, if he's waiting for a bus uh, at the bus stop, he goes on with his cell phone, logs into the Wi-Fi of the uh, district of, let's say, uh, Bucharest, and he's able to see what is available, what are the available sightseeing, for example, uh, or uh, what are the local attractions, or if there is any local festival. In, at summertime, there are so many going on. So these are, again, helping other industries to do business. It, they make our societies smarter. After we, are putting, after we have put intelligence on the infrastructure, then our company is investing in building applications. 
Uh, the application, uh, let me clarify it. I'm not talking about apps. I'm not talking about Android apps or uh, iOS uh, apps, but I'm talking about new ways of making money. And one of the uh, new things, which is coherent also with our uh, with the introduction of a new sector in our business, which is the energy sector, it's the smart lighting application. Well, what we found out, which is obvious to everyone, if you walk out in the streets, you will count more street lamps than anything else out in the street. Maybe you will see also some dustbins, but these are not useful for now. So you will count a lot of light poles. This can be an opportunity for business. Definitely, it's a liability for whoever is using them. It, is a power bill that has to be paid. So what we thought about is a solution which can solve two problems. Solving the problem of uh, the power bill and solving the problem of having this infrastructure and not knowing how to make money out of it. So we developed, in cooperation with the partner in this case, uh, an LED system which is controlled by a controller. So you can dim the light depending on the uh, situation at night, in a cloudy day, in a sunny day. That can, be de that can be done remotely. But at the same time, this is also a communication hub. There is a Wi-Fi inside. And this Wi-Fi can have communication back to somewhere, a cloud service. So somebody who's just working on the street, he can have access to whatever internet service he, ha he wants to do. Or to receive some location-based uh, service. So outside the, of a museum, for example, somebody can receive ticketing information, what are the attractions inside the museum, if there are uh, translation services available. So many things that will make somebody living or visiting the city easier and, again, willing to come again. So this is our smart lighting uh, application, which is introduced, again, in Barcelona this year. Uh, so, exactly what I was saying. For the, municipal, for the municipality, electricity bill savings, but at the same time, opportunities to do business. At the end of the cycle is the monetization. So everything we do, we're, we're doing that in order to help uh, our clients, our partners to make money. It's the, uh, unfortunately, this is the curse of the private industry. We have to uh, make money to keep the uh, life going on, to keep investing this into new technologies and to, uh, into new products. So, for example, the SMEs. The SMEs, as I said, is the nerve system of every single uh, economy. Well, what they are lacking, though, besides uh, a constant stream of funds, uh, to keep their business running, but this is not something that we can have a solution. That's banking sector. The other one is that whether they can have direct access to their uh, client uh, profiles and whether they can do some targeted marketing campaigns, knowing that their clients, for example, they prefer uh, yellow cheese instead of uh, goat cheese. Maybe an exaggerated example, but just to give you the example. So they have to know somehow the profile of their clients. They have to know where their clients uh, are going uh, to. That's something that we can build using uh, our big data uh, service, uh, smart campaign, uh, sorry, big data infrastructure and uh, software, the uh, marketing campaign uh, product, and the uh, service um, activation uh, product. I've been talking about a lot of um, products which require a human uh, at the other end. These days also the M2M uh, model is uh, increasing. What you do in the, in the cycle of making money is also billing and charging actually, charging first and then billing for the uh, services. Intercom has software solutions for that, homegrown uh, solutions. And then like I had mentioned for my example of the grocery stores, if there are any alerts and notifications that have to be sent to somebody, an IT manager, for example, or a standby engineer, instead of keeping the engineer next to the refrigerator in case that it has a problem, then you just send him on his smartphone a notification and you alert him. That's part of our suite of uh, software for this uh, field, for monetizing infrastructure applications and network intelligence. Technology is part now of our life. We cannot avoid it. 
and uh, we have to make it part of our life if it is not yet. Thank you very much.